2,117 kilometers. It is 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. 8.30, I think, here. It's one seven, sorry, 2,077 kilometers. 2,177. Hello? Yes? This way? That yes? One? Yes. Oh, I think I see a big mammoth. <laughs> okay, we're in Hot Springs, there South we Dakota. We arrived in a tremendous storm. I mean, it was blowing wind, raining. There was some flooding happening. Police had shut off one of the bridges. And now there's not a cloud in the sky, sunny and clear. Oh man, we're gonna try and get into this mammoth museum. No, 8:30. Well, do we want to go? And there are cars open there. All right, so we averaged about 700 kilometers per day. That's not an overly a you know, it's not lots, but we had stops along the way. Like this morning, we got up. We're ready to go at 7.30. I mean, if you drove into Hot Springs, South Dakota this morning, you would not have believed that the night before, thunder, lightning, rain, washing on the roads, everything, it's, there's not even a mud puddle anywhere to be seen. Incredible. But anyway, we get ready to go. We're looking out uh, to towards the interstate, and Cindy sees this big mammoth statue. And, well, let's go take a look, see what it is. We, we were not prepared. We didn't see any brochures, any ads or whatever for it. We just decided to drive up and check it out. So I'm thinking maybe it's a little museum, you know, some mammoth artifacts and stuff like that. Let's go take a look around. One of the best decisions along the way. And actually, there's a lot of best decisions because there's so much to encounter and see and not only see but experience in the United States when you're traveling by road. Just imagine that dinosaurs used to wander around this area 65 million years ago. Well, it wasn't actually dinosaurs that traveled around here, but think about this for a second. Just in a couple of days, you're going to have the new Jurassic World movie premiering. And although this is not Jurassic area, but tens and tens of thousands of years ago, they were mammoths wandering around here. Animals that are long gone. So that's Extinct. one of their big boys here? This one is actually a replica made from bones that we have found here. But Our it, bones didn't petrify. They didn't turn into stone. Yeah. So they're actually not strong enough to support their own weight. So he's a replica, but all the bones you see on the tour are real. But that is life-size? Correct. Wow. Holy smokes. There's the ribs I could dig into. Oh yeah, thinking of food again. Bless you. Thank you. Anyway, it's early morning. We decided to take the tour. It was just opening up. And uh, of course, this is going to delay our departure from Hot Springs, heading you know, towards Florida. But uh, well worth it. This is, like I said, incredible place. I'm going to let the video carry itself now, the stuff that we shot, and uh, it, it just absolutely blew me away.
eventually the sinkhole was completely filled in. When runoff water from rainstorms washed away the dirt from the area around the deposit, the former sinkhole was unaffected by this erosion and left as a hill. One day in 1974, earth leveling equipment excavating for a housing project unearthed the bones and tusks of mammoths. The importance of the discovery was recognized immediately, and the landowner, Bill Anderson, sold the land for what he paid for it to the newly formed nonprofit organization, the Mammoth Site of Hot Springs, South Dakota, Incorporated. Instead of a housing development, the land became a world renowned geological site. Fossils form under very special conditions and only about 1% of life that has existed on our planet has been preserved as fossils. The sinkhole provided a unique environment for preservation. The fossils remained undisturbed where the animal died. Because of the abundance, variety, and quality of animal remains preserved here, the mammoth site is without equal in North America. The mammoth site is also the only in situ, meaning bones have been left as they were found, display of fossil mammoths in North America making it important to scientists who have come from around the world to conduct research here. The Mammoth Site is a working paleontological site, and the task of uncovering, discovering, and preserving this wealth of Ice Age information continues. And now we invite you to experience firsthand the vestiges of the past. Throughout my life, even when I was a kid, and I mean, I think most kids like dinosaur stuff, and again, I realize this isn't dinosaur. It's much, much later. But nevertheless, you're stepping back into a time that's gone. Gone forever. First of all, I didn't even realize that there was a big difference between the size of a woolly mammoth and the Colombian mammoth. I never even knew of Colombian mammoths, to be honest. So the thing that happens is you're taking a trip going from point A to point B and along the way there's stops that you make and you learn and enrich yourself. This is priceless compared to getting on an airplane, maybe having a snooze and you get off the plane and you're wherever you, you know, you were going. We got to make more time for experiencing life. Uh, and like I said, you know, I just thought it was absolutely amazing place. A lot to learn, but not in an environment that makes learning unpleasant. Like, if, to be quite honest, I've talked about this long time ago in videos. Learning for me in school at, at times was unpleasant because some of the teachers were real, not very good at getting you excited about something or wanting to know more or see more. So this part of South Dakota, oh, rocks, rocks. Cindy's dad was a rock collector. I talked about that before also on the trip, that they used to go into Montana. They lived in Alberta when Cindy was young, and they would go into Montana and go looking for rocks, and then you have a rock tumbler at home, and uh, you polish them up, and you make your rock collections and stuff like that. You know, I think for a lot of kids today, that would just seem so you know, boring and ancient and stuff like that. But uh, a lot more interesting, in my opinion, than uh, texting on your uh, smartphone. It's uh, different things. Wounded knee. Oh, man, you know, there's so many Native American, American Indian books and things for sale there that you can learn about. It, it, it's, and I'm talking now about the building. We're here. We go. For about the next half hour. Before we start, if you have any gum, candy, food, or drinks that's not allowed in the bunk bed, so you can either take it to the front desk and have them hold it for you there, or put it in the trash can right behind you. If you have a cell phone, at a courtesy for everyone else on the tour, please turn it off or on silent throughout the tour. If you have a camera, feel free to take as many pictures as you would like. But keep in mind that after the tour, you will be allowed to go back around again. So you don't need to feel rushed in taking all the pictures that you want. I'm just going to get started talking about these panels here behind me. They just give us a brief history about how the sinkhole originally formed. This first panel all the way off to the left shows us what we think the Black Hills area looked like about 26,000 years ago. You can see it's mostly grassland with a few hills and not very many trees habitat for Colombian mammoth. Down below the grass, represented by the spearfish shale, or er, excuse me, represented by the reddish brown color is spearfish shale. Spearfish shale is actually that color. You can still see it all over the black
Black Hills and even down in our parking lot today. Down below the spearfish shell, represented by this light blue color, is limestone. Limestone is a very porous material, which means it has lots of little tiny holes to water can flow through it easily. When water flows through it, it dissolves, creating caves. If the roof of this cave gets too thin, everything comes crashing down and we're left with a bowl shaped depression at the top. When everything came crashing down, it came down with such force that allowed Nitesian Spring to come up and fill up the hole with water. This water was very warm, about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, so animals really enjoyed going in to take a bath, get a drink, or eat the green vegetation that grew around the outside year-round. The spearfish shale is very slippery when it's wet, so if an animal fell in, it could not get back out. And this especially, because they have very large, round, flat feet. So if they fell in, it was very difficult for them to gain enough traction to get back out. The animal would die of drowning, starvation, or exhaustion, and sink to the bottom of the pond. Over time, more and more animals fell in. It was a very gradual process. Only about one to three mammoths fell in every seven to ten years over a period of about 300 to 700 years. So it's not like a whole herd of mammoths just jump in all at the same time. It was a very gradual process. Eventually, the spring dried up and we're left with the giant mud wallow on the top. Mammoths are just like modern elephants, they love mud, so they go and roll around in it, stomp in it, get dirty. But mammoths weigh about 20,000 pounds, so they were just packing everything together. What was once the sinkhole is now packed together, but the soil on the sides is still loose. So the soil on the sides eroded away and we're left with a hill. It's called topographic reversal when a hole comes into a hill. And that explains why you had to walk up a hill to look down into our hole today. Do we have any questions? Alright, once the tour begins, we will be using a phone system. I'll be talking into a microphone like this one, and you'll be listening on a phone. Next to your phone, you'll find a volume dial. If it's too quiet, turn it up. If it's too loud, turn it down. It is a one-way phone system, so I can talk to you, and you can hear what I'm saying. But if you're talking to the phone, you're talking to yourself. If you have a question, speak up and talk loud enough so I can hear you. I'm going to collect your ticket with a man's symbol stamped on the back. We're going to head up this ramp to the left. You can stop anywhere along the green. up at the ceiling, we can see a tan beam that runs the length of the building. This tan beam represents where the top of the hill was in 1974 before any excavation was done. Since then, we have removed a lot of soil. If we follow the center rafter down to the other beam and down the stream, we see a small orange ball hanging from the ceiling. This small orange ball represents where the first bone fragments were found. In 1974, a man named Phil Anderson was looking at turning this area into a housing development and his bulldozer hit some bones. He was lucky enough to notice, so he called Dr. Larry Agenbrod, who is now the site director, and gave him three years to decide whether or not the site was site, and it is now the man's site of Hot Springs, South Dakota, Incorporated, a private nonprofit organization. If we continue to follow, that run into the silhouette of an animal that looks like a camel. That is not a camel, however, that is a camelops, the extinct version of today's camel. To the right of the camelops, we can see the life-size silhouette of the Colombian mammoth. This mammoth is very large, he stands about 12 to 14 feet at the shoulder and weighs around 20,000 pounds. He's so big that modern elephants can walk under his chin without even brushing it. <coughs> if we look all the way to the left, we can see the life-size silhouette of the woolly mammoth. 
You can see it's a lot smaller, but it has a lot more fur than the Colombian mammoth. This is because it originated in colder areas. If we look over the railing into the bone bed, we can see several large curved objects. These objects are mammoth tusks. We count the number of mammoths we have by the number of tusks that we have uncovered. So far, we have a total of 118 tusks. If each mammoth came in with two tusks, simple math tells us it's 59 mammoths. 56 of them are Colombian, and only three of them are woolly. Throughout the bone bed marked by light blue flags, we can see objects that look like the bottoms of our tennis shoes. If you can't see those ones, there's some more off to the left. These objects are mammoth teeth. The teeth tell us three things about the mammoth. They tell us what it ate, what species it was, and how old it was when it died. Just by looking at the tooth, we can see that it has a large grinding surface, so it must have eaten mainly plants. On average, a mammoth could eat up to 500 pounds of grass every day. Do we have any questions? Is this real? It is. <laughs> These are the actual bones. Wow. It, it looks like a set. Yeah, it does. Can't believe so many. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Alright, we're going to move to the left and stop anywhere along the tan rail. have a total of 82 different species. There's no dinosaur bones though among these. No, is this is after the time of the dinosaurs. Okay. Yep. Can everyone hear me okay? If we look off to the right, we can see a large pedestal marked by a green flag. On top of this pedestal, we can see a large butterfly-shaped bone. This bone is the mammoth pelvis, the hips of a mammoth. By taking special measurements on the pelvis, we can determine whether the mammoth is male or female. Just by taking a guess, do you think we have found more males, more females, or an even mixture of both? More males. More males? More females. More females? They're actually all males. There are no females. The male tour guides say that's because the girls pushed them in. The female tour guides say that's because they wouldn't stop and ask for directions. Both believable stories, right? The scientific reasoning is that, like modern elephants, mammoths lived in a matriarch society where the oldest female was in charge. When the mammoths hit maturity, anywhere from age 12 to age 29, they would start getting feisty and fighting with each other, so grandma would kick them out of the herd. They were off wandering on their own. They found a warm pond, fell in, and could not get back out. If you look towards the center, you can see a white flag next to some very small tools. These are the actual tools we use to dig in the mammoth site. This is a work in progress. We are still digging every summer. There are two groups that come in and dig with us, and anyone can join them as long as you're 18 years or older. One group is called Road Scholars. They come in once in the spring and once in the fall. The other group is called Earth Watch. They come in during the month of July to dig with us. They are the group that you see digging today. The rest of the year spent identifying and cataloging bones and preparing some bones for removal. To the left of the tools, next to a black flag, we can see some more objects that look like the bones of our tennis shoes. These objects are full of human teeth. You can see that they're kind of rectangular in shape, and the ridges are fairly straight cut. If we look all the way off the left, we can
Mandapa of a Colombian man with mandible, the lower jaw of a Colombian man. As it is carried past you, you can feel it. Humans have 32 teeth in their mouth as adults. Mammoths only have four teeth in their mouth at any given time. They have two on the top and two on the bottom. Obviously, if this is the lower jaw, these must be the bottom teeth. Human teeth start in the bottom of the jaw and push upward. Mammoth teeth start in the back of the jaw and push forward like they're on a conveyor belt. The tooth will chip off in the front and the mammoth will spit out or swallow the piece before the next tooth moves forward to fill in its place. Humans go through two sets of teeth in their lifetime, but mammoths can go through up to six sets of teeth. Using the small tools, it could take weeks, even up to a couple months, to take out a tusk. Are they ever sold? No. no. Part of the contract when the mammoth site was turned over to the mammoth site was that none of the, all of the bones have to stay here. They can't be sold or even loaned out. They have to okay. stay here. Is there a certain number that will always be left on the site, or is this just because it's a work in progress? Is mm -hmm. plan to have them all on Earth? Does, or? We are leaving as many as we can in place, but we're taking out as few as possible. We're only taking out the ones that we have to take. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. <laughs> you guys can all come help me if you want to. I just need a couple people to help me hold it up, okay? You can come too. This is the replica of a Colombian mammoth femur, the upper leg bone of a Colombian mammoth, the one that runs from your knee up to your hip. This just gives us a size comparison. If this is only half of his leg, imagine how big the whole mammoth was. Do you have any questions? All right.